Hello everyone, welcome on into the last video here in this little section on the cell. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over the processes of mitosis, going go, go into the cell cycle, which means we're gonna talk about DNA replication, and then we're gonna talk about how cell functions for gene expression going through transcription and translation. So taking that DNA, making it into a messenger RNA, then turning that messenger RNA into proteins. Um, so with that, we're going to be talking about transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, and so forth for protein synthesis or gene expression. Alrighty. Um, sorry for the little bark right there. The mailman just arrived. All right. So first up here is mitosis and the cell cycle. Um, so cell cycle is kind of like a clock right here. So it goes around like this. We end with, well, we start with M right here. So M stands for mitosis. So just imagine a new formed cell is right here, ready to go do its purpose. Um, it grows through G1. It stands for growth one. Um, so G for growth. And then it does this thing. It's doing gene expression, doing what it should do. Now let's say it's a cell that will never divide and is what is cardiac cell neurons and so forth. That enters a phase called G0 or G0, and that's just where cells are not actively dividing. But now let's say a cell gets a signal to divide right here. What are certain signals? Well, maybe the cell next to it is doing bad. Maybe it's growing too big and needs to divide. Um, or the cell next to it dies. So you need to fill that space. Think of the linings of your stomach constantly dividing and growing. So those cells are going through, they're highly regenerative, meaning going through a lot of mitosis. So they get the signal. There's these different checkpoints involved. Gr think of them as green lights. Um, so this green light says, hey, we need to divide and fill the space next to us. We need to enter S phase. S stands for synthesis which means you're replicating the DNA. You must replicate the DNA in order to go through mitosis. Mitosis results in two genetically identical daughter cells. And for those cells to have the same DNA, you have to duplicate the original DNA. So here we go through DNA replication for S. So synthesis is making. So DNA replication. So how does DNA replication work? Well, if you remember, DNA, four base pairs, A, T, G, and C, adding thymine, guanine, and cytosine, the double-stranded, so here we have a thymine paired with an A with T, and then here's a G with a C. So how do we reform this sequence? Well, you break these hydrogen bonds, and then you add the, the same base. So here this T will get another A, this G will get another C. So you add it via this complementary base pairing. So we already talked about nucleotides in the chemistry chapter. So this is just a little uh, refresher on their structure. They're a sugar, a phosphate, and a base. And bases are added via the complementary base pairing to then form the sugar phosphate backbone and this double helix structure. So this is a quick and dirty version of DNA replication. This is a survey course, so we're not gonna go into great, great details on it. But what happens is you break those hydrogen bonds, like drew that squiggle down through there. You break those bonds that separates the helix. So here we are breaking those bonds. And this is done via an enzyme called helicase. Helicase kind of unwinds the DNA and breaks those hydrogen bonds. <laughs> and then, as those bonds are open and free, DNA polymerase, polymerase means it builds, elongates DNA. DNA polymerase comes in and adds nucleotides one base at a time. Now, why I say one base at a time, it's about 30 per second in humans, which is still pretty impressive. Um, so it's an enzyme, it just works its way down. So as this unwinds here, and unwinds all the bases. There's other enzymes like gyrase or topoisomerase, which relieves the unwinding tension, but again, outside the scope of this course. Um, but this just continues on down all the way to the end. Um, now, what happens, so this is called the leading strand. However, down here in the lagging strand, it, DNA polymerase only works one direction, uh, five prime to three prime. So it adds ends at what's known as the three prime end of the DNA strand down here. So it can only add nucleotides there. However, it can't add them this way. And this is the way the unwinding is occurring. So it adds them to there, um, fills, out, fill, fills all that in. And then as more opens up, it'll add another section there and so forth. So these, this lagging strand, it kind of forms it in sections rather than 
being continuous. So leading is a continuous one, lagging does it in sections. They're called Okazaki fragments. Um, and then there's some other enzymes involved that come in and remove the, and seal the nicks in a way. It's called DNA ligase. Um, but in the end, we form two new strands of DNA. And so when we draw a chromosome here, we have, you know, one side of the chromosome, it replicates, and then you form the other side. So these are known as sister chromatids. And the purpose of DNA replication then is to break them, pull one that way, in one that way, to then get two new daughter cells with the exact same information in them. Um, so up here then, you get that structure of the chromosome. Um, the center of a chromosome is called the centromere, and it's just more condensed DNA. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more because that's where it grabs it to then pull it to opposite sides. But then at this point in the cell cycle, we have a lot of DNA inside that nucleus. So that nucleus in here is completely packed full of DNA because all chromosomes were replicated. Humans have 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes, and they just all duplicated. That is a lot of chromosomes that are currently present. So then G2, growth 2. It's just where the cell is finally preparing to then enter mitosis. Um, so it's just getting things ready, getting things in the right components. If you take the cytoplasm, the fluid from right here and add it to a cell over here, it will immediately enter mitosis. There's these proteins without DNA replicating. Um, there are these proteins called cyclins. Oops, let me make that smaller. Cyclins, there are different variations, um, A, B, C, D, and so forth, um, and they, run this cell cycle. They change in concentration and work with enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinases. So if you add a high concentration of cyclins here, it'll immediately get the signal that says, hey, we're going through mitosis. Um, but here there's a pretty much another green light that says, okay, you have permission to now enter. And then there's even another green light within mitosis that says it has permission to then finish in metaphase. Um, so it gets all these stop and go signals and any failure of these stop and go signals such as you know cyclin not being made properly or being made too much consistently will then cause uncontrolled cell division and the definition of cancer is uncontrolled cell division so slightly important there all right then we go into all the mitotic events right here prophase prometaphase metaphase anaphase telophase and cytokinesis i remember them as pmat Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Yes, there's prometaphase, but it's not a big deal. Um, first step here in prophase is you condense all of the DNA into chromosomes, which are the little discrete units here. The little X's are the chromosomes. You also see the nuclear envelope beginning to break down. You have to break down that envelope in order to separate the DNA or the chromosomes. And then you also get the production of these centrosomes. These centrosomes are going to move to opposite sides. So prometaphase here is where those centrosomes are in opposite poles. And then you start releasing these spindle fibers. Um, so spindle fibers are microtubules. Some of them will overlap each other, but most of them are trying to find centromeres. They form something called a kinetochore then um, on the chromosome. And then they eventually will try to line up in the middle. So then metaphase is where all the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. Um, so here you can see them lined up in the middle in this image. Here, they're a little bit more, chromosomes are all spread out. And here you can still see a nuclear envelope around there as well. Um, so for these histology images. Then anaphase, remember anaphase where they're going away from each other. So you get a pool of the chromosomes here going away. Now, we won't go into the structure on how these spindle fibers pull away, but the kinetic cord acts like a little Pac-Man and it kind of eats its way down through, but they're being pulled to opposite sides then. So then each side of this cell will have three chromosomes. Um, did they? Oh, change, they screwed up this image. Um, they had uh, four chromosomes in this image, and then they have three here, and then they split. Okay, um, don't worry about that. Uh, but as an aside, I just found. Um, so they lost a chromosome in this process. So now it's pulling three to each side, and then you see three chromosomes. Well, actually, they brought the fourth back, it looks like, um, in each of these final cells over here. Don't worry about chromosome number right now, um, but this image isn't 100% accurate. Uh, so here, let's just draw three for 
our sake. Um, so three in each cell, you see the nuclear envelopes reforming. This is telophase. Tele telophase is where the nuclear envelopes start forming. And then you get this actin ring that starts forming down the middle. So think about a balloon when you put a rubber band on it and it starts squeezing it. That's what actin does. So it kind of squeezes it, squeezes it, squeezes it until it pops it apart. Um, so then once it, as soon as it pops apart, it's known as cytokinesis or, you know, cell splitting um, <coughs> or cell forming. Uh, and then here, two new cells form. And this is called a cleavage furrow where that actin pinches it in. Plant cells do this differently. They form a plant cell wall, but then you produce two new daughter cells with genetically identical material in them. So kind of cool how that, how mitosis works, producing that genetic material. Now, to change topics a little bit, what else does that, what does that DNA do during that normal growth phase when a cell is doing its thing? Well, it's going through gene expression, typically. Um, it's producing proteins that are functioning. Um, so think of insulin production. Those beta islet cells, that's what produces the type of cells that produce insulin in the pancreas are producing cell, producing insulin, secreting them when your body needs it. So in order to do that, you go through a process called gene expression. So the so insulin has a gene. A gene is a sequence. So sorry, I'm talking without thinking about writing. Uh, a gene is a sequence in your DNA that codes for that protein. So all the proteins in your body that you make, your DNA codes for them. And so the first step is transcription. So transcription finds that gene, finds that sequence in your DNA that codes for something like insulin and transcribes it into something known as messenger RNA. So it does this via an enzyme called RNA polymerase. So just like DNA polymerase, this one elongates the strand, but it adds RNA. And remember the difference between RNA and DNA is one, the sugar, it's ribose instead of a deoxyribose. And instead of thymines, there are now uracils, a different base. Um, so here, instead of a, a T, here we have a U. So A now pairs with U. RNA is also single-stranded, typically. It can form double strands, but it's typically single-stranded. So here, it finds the promoter sequence, which is what initiates it. So one, it initiates, and then it elongates, then eventually, um, so then it elongates, and eventually will terminate down here. And then this RNA transcript can just leave. So it goes out into the nucleus. It doesn't go into my head. Uh, <laughs> And then it goes out, it's still in the nucleus. Uh, now in eukaryotes, that RNA does go through some post-transcriptional modifications. I, also, I remember transcribe, transcription, it's still the language of nucleotides. It goes from bases to bases. Yes, use different, but you're making it instead of DNA language, it's now RNA language. And it's think of it as a different accent, you're transcribing it. But when you go from RNA, to proteins, you're changing the language completely. So you gotta translate it. Um, so that's the how I remember transcription and translation. But anyway, post-transcriptional modification, there's something called splicing. So in eukaryotes, um, we have introns and exons, and then we also add something called a poly-A tail. Don't worry about that here, but there is some modifications that happen before this messenger RNA, mRNA, leaves the nucleus. Um, so now let's imagine we have that process messenger RNA, exits a nuclear pore, and now it's going to be translated. This is the genetic code. So every three bases, called a codon, code for one of the 20 amino acids. So SCR, this is serine, um, alanine, glycine, arginine, all are found here. And so you find a code, ACU, threonine. Um, it codes for that. Um, CUU, leucine. You see these all four different codons here code for leucine. So if you happen to have a mutation where this C became an A, it would still code for leucine and you would get lucky. There are different types of mutations you could have here. But if that C became an A, now we had AUU, now it's isoleucine and that could behave differently when it forms the final protein. Uh, first thing you need a, how do you start? Translation, well, you need a start codon, and that's AUG. So every single protein we have starts with AUG or methionine. Why? It puts us in what's called the correct reading frame. Since codons are three at a time, you don't want to start somewhere random, some random three. You want to be 
reading the correct words. Imagine reading a book, half of this word and half of the next word. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, and then, so that's initiation. And then elongation happens. So this is all happening at ribosomes, which are made of R RNA or ribosomal RNA. And then you elongate, that's step two. And then step three, we stop. So there are three different stop codons here that stop the process. So here's that process. So we have the start codon come in, um, AUG. So this is, well, ribosomes have two subunits to them. A small subunit finds that start codon and then finds the start anticodon matches with it, carrying that methionine. So what carries it in? It's called transfer RNA. Transfer RNA kind of has this weird structure where the amino acid, so methionine, is carried right there, and then down here is the anticodon. So it kind of carries it in, binds right here, and then has that amino acid attached to it. Then the large subunit comes down in. So T, so this is a type of RNA, transfer RNA. It transfers the amino acid. It then adds it, Ribosome, large subunit clamps down. So that's step one, that's initiation. And then elongation, it just goes down. Codon by codon by codon. Now that is in the correct reading frame. Amino acids and get joined together via peptide bonds. So here we have bonds joining together, forming a polypeptide chain. And eventually, it doesn't show it here, you'll hit a stop codon, which brings in a termination factor, and then the polypeptide chain leaves away. Remember, then that's the primary structure, then goes secondary, tertiary, and possibly quaternary structure for protein folding based on the chain of amino acids. Um, but that's how we turn our genes and our DNA into a protein. So we go from that template strand from DNA to RNA, te technically messenger RNA, to protein. Um, so here it's showing the codons, and this one would be methionine, uh, proline, um, I think that one's glutamine, serine, valine, histidine, alanine, leucine, methionine, cysteine. So that would be that protein chain for this particular sequence right there. So remember, transcription occurs in the nucleus where messenger RNA is formed from DNA, and then a messenger RNA then leaves the nucleus, goes out into the cytoplasm, where then translation occurs. If it that is a secretory protein like insulin, what happens is it finds a ribosome. The ribosome it again gets carried to the rough ER, where then it gets made into the rough ER, it gets transported to the Golgi apparatus, and then from the Golgi gets sent out the cell and sent can be secreted then. So that kind of brings in everything we just learned about the cell from the organelles to the you know, structure, cell membrane, all that stuff kind of gets finalized here in the last video in this section covering the cell. Alrighty, that's all we have for today. We covered a lot of information. So if you have any questions, definitely let me know. But I hope you have a great rest of your day and bye-bye.